So how many of you have been to the Macy's Day Parade in New York City? Anyone here? Oh, good. Three of us. How many of you have been to the Rose Bowl Parade? Great. How many of you have been to a parade in your life? Okay, everyone. How many of you don't like parades? <laughs> we have three, four. So you can leave now. <laughs> no, 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 don't go anywhere. Please stay. So parades, I love parades. I love the music. I love the color. I love the song. I love the energy of a parade. I mean, we just talked about a parade a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, the Parade of Palms. It wasn't quite the parade I would have envisioned for the king riding in as they're singing Hosanna, King of the Jews. Um, it was a donkey he was on. I mean, it wasn't a beautiful thoroughbred from Kentucky Derby. Um, not my idea of a parade. And then there was the parade a horrible parade of pain and suffering. And I guess you could call the par parade as Jesus walked with a cross through the crowds and they were jeering and making fun and not my kind of parade. And then, of course, we come to last Sunday where it's like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. He was supposed to be, but he's alive. And we celebrate that moment. Now, I realized that that wasn't the time for a parade. Because if you were Thomas, and the first time you saw Jesus who was supposed to be dead in the tomb, and you see him, you're thinking, uh-oh, <clears throat> I doubt it. And the first thing Thomas is feeling is, I am so sorry. And they have this serious talk. I am so sorry. for this. And then Peter comes around the corner and Peter sees Jesus, and Peter's thinking, oh, geez, you didn't believe. I denied him three times. Peter wants to run and hide. A parade in that moment? I don't think so. But I think probably what happened, and there's a whole lot of license going on here on my part, is Jesus looks at them, and all of a sudden, their guilt is gone because they feel the overwhelming love that this person has for them. They all look, and they're not thinking, okay, I should have believed, I shouldn't have doubted. And of course, in that moment, too, they're still trying to get over the fact that their despair is high in the chart. Their depression, their loss of hope is way up here, and they've got to get over that. And I'm sure Jesus, sitting around, having a meal with them, is saying, you know what? You guys need to lighten up. So let me tell you a few jokes. Let's laugh a little. Because remember, there is a time to weep. And you were weeping last week. But there's a time to laugh. And if ever there was a time to laugh, it's right now. It's this Sunday. So why don't we have a parade? So I guess maybe that's where, long ago... The church came up with this idea of having Bright Sunday or Holy Humor Sunday. Let's have a parade. And it's going to be bigger and brighter than what you saw at Macy's Day. And the Rose Parade. And the bands and the music. We're just going to put on an incredible, incredible parade. It's time to celebrate. It's time to sing. That's probably why the poem by Joseph Bailey was written. Easter Psalm, he called it. Let's celebrate Easter with a rite of laughter. Christ died and rose and lives. So laugh like a woman who holds her first baby. Laugh like a man who finds he doesn't have cancer, or he does, but now there's a cure. Laugh like children at Disneyland's gates. Laugh like one who walks away uninjured from a wreck in which the car was totaled. Laugh as if all the people in the world were invited to a picnic. And then, go ahead, invite them to the picnic. Let's have fun. Let's laugh. 
We don't do that in church. It's, it's so serious sometimes when people walk into a church, which is why it's so nice when we laugh. It's so nice when you have someone who tells a joke, someone who makes you laugh, like Daryl. Speaking of Daryl, don't you wish and hope that right now he's still in his pajamas at home in bed reading a book because he doesn't have to be here? I know you do. And I know that the appreciation and the love that you have for Daryl that he has for you. So I must say that I am so grateful to walk into a situation like this, a congregation like this. For me, this is just going to be an enjoyable time to spend three months with you because you are who you are. And I hope that uh, you can tolerate me. So, so why, why celebrate? Why laugh? Because he's alive. A former prolific biblical scholar from DePaul University in Chicago, he believed that the body of Jesus was eaten up by dogs. Truly. But, but the dead man was talking to a woman near the tomb. A young scientist proclaimed, I've learned to deal with the world in a purely rational way. Christianity is inherently irrational. And Daryl mentioned that last Sunday. There's no way for a rational, modern, scientific person to be a Christian. But the dead man was talking to two men who seemed to be on their way to the road to Emmaus. There was a German New Testament scholar who was visiting Vanderbilt University who called the resurrection an empty formula and mass ecstasy. But the dead man was talking to a group of people on the shore of the Sea of Tiberias. The dead man was walking, he was talking, and yes, I'm sure he was laughing and feeling, boy, I'm glad that's over. That was not easy. That was not fun. If ever, if ever there was a time to laugh and sing and dance, whatever dance you want to do, if it's as good as Robert, or if you want to shake it some other way, you can do that. But we're not going to sit here like this. Use your imagination just for a moment. Jesus Christ is going to walk in through the doors, and he's going to come forward. What will you do? <laughs> your heart is going to know it's not going to look like the Jesus that has been portrayed in all the pictures, but your heart is just instantly going to know, oh my goodness, it's Jesus. What are you going to do? What's your face going to look like? What expression is going to be on your face? It's like, no. It's so nice, you know. It's a tough thing, let me tell you. From Daryl's standpoint, from my standpoint, when you're up here talking, because you're talking to people and it's like, you know, you're serious and you're listening. It's so nice when you smile and laugh. So I guess I could be a stand-up comedian and just make you laugh the whole time, but you may not come back. Um, but you probably would be smiling when Jesus comes in. You probably would get out of the pew and you would give him a hug. But there's something else you would probably do too. It's what the fans in Chicago did after so many years of having the Cubs lose and lose. They had the most incredible parade. They went crazy. They do it every time a sports figure or a sports team wins. They have a parade. And when Jesus comes in, you would probably stand in your feet. And this is what we're going to do when Daryl and I share the Sunday that is my last and he comes back from a sabbatical. So I'm telling you this right now. We're going to stand, and as we come down, you're going to do what you would probably do if Jesus walked in here. You're going to stand up, and you're going to applaud like crazy people because your team just won. 
The victory is won. O death, where is your victory? O grave, where is your sting? (laughs) Thanks be, Jesus is alive. So if Jesus came in the door, everybody's going to stand up, and we're going to start to clap. Wait a minute. Get up. Jesus is walking in the door. I'm Stand up. Everybody stand up. <laughs> and just look and go crazy. And you're going to clap, and you're going to hoot, and you're going to holler, and you're going to whistle, and you're going to get out of the pews, and you're going to give him a hug, and then you're going to sit down. Because I'm done. So when Daryl comes back, that's what we're going to do. We're going to walk down the aisle together. I'm just going to tell him that's how I want to do it because that's how we've been doing it. And what I want you to do is I just want you to burst into wild applause. You can whistle and hoot and holler. And I just want to see the expression on his face. Okay? So will you remember that? I don't know what my cue is going to be. I'll let you know the Sunday before. But that's what we're going to do. But the point of the story is that this morning... He's alive. Jesus Christ is alive. And if ever there should be a reason to laugh and have a parade, to celebrate a victory, it's right now.